Okay, um, I am not okay with this, Richard Ellis. Yes. Am I talking about your show or the current situation we are in? Thing. It's a, that title has been applicable to a lot of situations since, so <laughs> whatever you want to apply it to. So actually tell me about it because I, I, I watched it and it's very addictive. Uh, it in its entirety yet. I, and I haven't seen it in its entirety yet. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's a great binge watching show. Um, it's it, it takes place you you're in high school everyone's in high school but it's not just for viewers who are in high school it really hits all ages I love your character <laughs> so tell me about the show and tell me about your character yes yeah, so um, the way I've been describing it is it's it's an offbeat coming of age story that just happens to have a superhero origin story mixed into it. But what was really cool about it was that the superpower super weren't really at the forefront of the show. It was much more of a coming of age story about Sydney's character and her try to make it through high school. And then you factor in the fact she has these powers she can't control, causes a lot of, uh, a lot of issues. Well, you are the character um, she loves to hate. Um, I'm not going to give much away other than the fact that you're the most popular guy in school. You're the guy all the girls want, all the guys want. Plus, you're smart. You're great in sport. Other than arrogance every now and again that comes in. Yeah. So I got it um, probably like late, mid-afternoon. The audition came in from my manager, and I just remember seeing who was attached, which I didn't know any of the castmates yet, so... All I saw was that Jonathan Entwistle, who did the end of the effing world, and the producers of Stranger Things, 21 Laps, were behind it. And that was one of those ones that I looked at and went, ah, this will be fun to read for, but I'm not getting this one, you know? Because you, you just assume that it's going to go to some, some person that you've watched in a million things. So I prepared it the best that I could. I remember reading it and just thinking it was so funny. I didn't get the script. I only had, um, like, three scenes. Um, so it was like eight pages. I had a day to learn all of it. Got it all in my head. It was the first audition of the day. First person they saw for the role, actually. And I went in, and I just had an absolute blast with it. Um, the first scene, if you saw the like little party speech in episode yeah, three, okay. yeah, that was that was scene one. And I remember I had wanted to do it like Wolf of Wall Street when Leo's like, I'm not and he's like speaking in the mic, and they're all going nuts. Um, and I remember a lot of my peers were like, no, that's, that's ridiculous. Don't do that. So I was like, yeah, 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 you're right. I'm not going to do that. And as we went through, they let me redo that scene, which almost never happens in an in-room audition. They're like, go back to the beginning and, and do it how you want to do it. I was like, can I do it like Leo and Wolf of Wall Street? And they're like, yes. I was like, great. So I just basically hammed up the whole thing. I left. I was like, all right, I think that went well. Who knows? And then a week later, I got the call that I got it. And there was no callback or anything, which is pretty unheard of wow. especially for for a decently sized for, for a sizable role like that so i cried when i found out Couldn't and you also it. learned that you trust your instincts because that's what got you there yeah and um that was that was definitely the big takeaway for that which was generally speaking your your instincts what you're going to bring to the table is the most interesting part of the thing that makes it unique and you know, if you if you listen to other people all the time, you're going to end up doing this portrayal that isn't exactly authentic. And I think when you show up on set to do the job, you're going to constantly be fighting against your own thoughts and your own beliefs of how it should be done. So it's just it, it was a good it was a good testament to the fact that if you just you do the work and trust yourself and do it wholeheartedly, it, it, it could work out for you. So what has it been like from going from uh, working on a set with other actors and all the other people that being on a set uh, entails you work with to quarantine? I'm going a little nuts, but um, I think there's something uh, comforting in the fact that everybody in the entire world is going through this. And I think it's a really good opportunity. To, it, I, I've kind of looked at it as like forced meditation where you have to sit there and be with your own thoughts and kind of learn how to be comfortable with yourself instead of learning or instead of um 
using certain places as a distraction or if you don't feel good about something, just leaving the house immediately or this, this and that. It's, it's an interesting time to be forced to sit in it. Now, where, where is your quarantine? Are you in L.A. right now? No, oh, I, uh, I ended up going back home to be with my family. So I'm in small town Connecticut right now, which is, um, oh, yeah, um, <laughs> it is nice to not be surrounded by so many people. Just in case, um, we've definitely had to make our own fun, but I at least get to hang out with my family the whole time, which is way better than sitting alone. What are your self-quarantine activities? A lot of sleeping, a lot of eating, a lot of eating. Uh, um, for me, me and my brother play music, so we've been playing a bunch of guitar, uh, been working on like the recording programs on the computer and learning how to make little beats on my keyboard. Um, been writing a little bit, been, been journaling. So what are you eating? And are you cooking? Lucky for me, my mom's cooking most of it. So spoiled with that. She's a phenomenal cook. Are you craving the comfort food, junk food, or are you trying to stay, you know, lean and vegetables and fruits? So it's been, it's been generally lean, but uh, I, I'll, I'd be lying if I said this weekend I didn't go absolutely crazy with some pizza. I think a calzone. I want to say there's sushi. <laughs> Did you say sushi? Yeah, there was sushi. You ordered in sushi? Yeah. <laughs> Probably not safe. Um, I think it is, because I think we would have heard if the virus stays on food, because yeah. we've heard it stays on other things. But there's yeah. just something about me wanting to really cook and wash everything that I consume. So <laughs> That is a good point. That was in hindsight, probably a dumb move. But you no, know, I'll be honest. It was pretty fantastic. And you're clearly fine. And clearly I am I am fine. Yeah, but um it uh I had like I had a soda. I don't drink soda. I was like, I just really wanted a soda. And I finished it and I'm like, why did I do that? So it's yeah. like it's yeah. been this weird uh weird balance of trying to stay healthy while basically having a lazy Sunday every single day is what it feels like. Aside from possibly getting the virus and possibly giving it to somebody else. What is your biggest fear surrounding this whole crisis? That is a good question. Um, for me, it's definitely been, uh, been, been looking at the market and the, and the uh, economical repercussions that have happened. So we know that this crisis has economic repercussions mm -hmm. on the entertainment industry. But let's talk about the creative effects on the entertainment industry. Do you think we're gonna start to see something different in the writing in how we deal with relationships and interacting? That's a really good question. I mean, art often imitates life and life imitates art. It's kind of like this synergistic thing where you know, it's, it's like, what came first, chicken or the egg? It's like, sometimes they'll imitate each other. Well, I think it's, yeah. it's inevitable that we will see something made that chronicles this experience because this has never happened in the history of the world where everyone collectively shut down. So, yeah, that was a good, that's a good question, though. I haven't given it much thought. But What do you think the silver lining can be as a society once we get out of this? I think all those moments where you would stay in or complain about being in a group or crowded or this and that, I think I'm hoping there's an appreciation for being able to be out in the world. So I think when people come out of this, I, there will be a new lease on life, or at least I hope so. There will be for me. What is the one thing you cannot wait to do when finally they say, all is clear, go out? Play basketball at a park pass a ball around that other people have touched and just running around outside with other people. That and bowling at least. I really miss bowling. I love bowling. I know. I like full spot a bowling ball a couple months ago. Like a legit one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I remember when this was all going down, I'm like, oh everyone's home, we should bowl. And then as soon as I said it, I'm like, that is if I were to make a top five of like worst places to go, it would bowling alley would be in there. Yeah, share shoes, share balls, just shoes. I mean like ugh. 
sweaty, the sweaty holes in the ball. Sweaty, just sweaty everything. <laughs> smells like a locker room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. except like a bowling. Yeah, yeah. So I have a hypothetical, which isn't so hypothetical. It's as if we're told it's a complete shutdown. There is no takeout delivery. We're closing the grocery stores. We're closing the pharmacies uh, for the next two weeks. That's it. No one's allowed outside. Done. What are the five top items from outside you're going to make sure you have with you inside? Ooh. The second thing. The first would, would have to be nutritious food. Not not the garbage, not the microwavable stuff, the stuff that'll actually like keep you sustained and keep you mentally healthy. I would say that. Uh join the craze, probably toilet paper. I don't I don't I don't want to be in that position where I'm like making makeshift TP and ripping up old shirts and whatnot. <laughs> Sounds like a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom would appreciate that in terms of laundry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I don't have to elaborate on that one much for people to understand yeah. where I'm going with this. Um, my guitar, because uh, it is really helpful in passing the time. My phone, my journal, because it helps and it gives me something to think about and ponder what the hell is going on. <laughs> So where do you see yourself in 12 months from now? 12 months, I plan on being on set on another series or movie, something. Um, I've, da I've been dabbling in writing, so also getting that into, getting something I've written into production would be incredible. And releasing some music and just... Uh, just trying to have my hand in all parts of the creative process in the industry, assuming everything is up and running again. But I just, I just want to be working on a million different things. Nice. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Have fun writing and playing music and eating. Thank you. <laughs> Talk soon. Right, bye. bye.